Good day, kids! It is time to learn about science. This is our module 3, week 3, for the fourth quarter. And our today's lesson is all about weather disturbances. And these are the objectives that we need to tackle in order for us to learn more about the weather disturbances. First, we have to identify and describe the weather disturbances such as depression, storm, and typhoon. We also need to describe a low pressure area, high pressure area, and the monsoon winds. We also need to explain the changes in the weather before, during, and after the typhoon. And of course, we need to practice the precautionary measures before, during, and after the typhoon. The Philippines experiences an average of 20 typhoons a year and the biggest contributor of the weather disturbances in our country is the Pacific Ocean that lies on the eastern part of our country. Typhoon is just one of the few weather disturbances that we experience and that is what we are going to discuss for today. First, let us define weather. Weather is the condition of the atmosphere at a short period of time, meaning to say, we can experience a sudden change of weather from time to time in just one span of a day. What are the factors that affect the weather? These are temperature, air pressure, humidity, clouds, precipitation, wind speed, and wind direction. Once these factors change and affect the condition of the atmosphere, weather disturbances occur. Now, let us define what is a weather disturbances. These refer to any disruption of the atmosphere stable condition. It can manifest through the formation of low pressure area or different prevailing winds like monsoon and the intertropical convergence zone or the ITCZ. Let us now proceed to the low pressure area or the LPA and the high pressure area or the HPA. Here is the illustration. This refers to the weight of air that is pressing down on Earth. A sudden change in air pressure can trigger weather disturbances. Let us first have the high pressure area. High pressure area or the HPA is when cold air sinks or pressing down. Because of this, the air on the surface becomes dry. That is the time that we experience a fine weather. Let us proceed to LPA or the low pressure area. Low pressure area, it is when air rises. Less air passes downward, resulting to the formation of LPA. So if there is an LPA, these can result weather disturbances such as rains and strong winds. Cyclones. What is a cyclone? This is an illustration of a cyclone. In a cyclone, the cool air flows to the place of the rising warm air and because of this, the air guard spins. The wind spires around the center of the cyclone and it is called the eye. If you can observe the cyclone in the illustration, you can see a small hole in the middle of it. That is what we call the eye of the cyclone. When a cycle is formed over the tropics, it is now called a tropical cyclone. Let us try to look at the illustration. That is the Philippine area of responsibility. Tropical cyclones that occur within the Philippine area of responsibility or the PAR can be developed in two areas. Some tropical cyclones can be developed over the Pacific Ocean and some of the tropical cyclones can be developed in the West Philippine Sea. The Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration or also known as the PAGASA is the agency that keeps track of the cyclones that enter the PAR. They are the one responsible in informing us about the weather disturbances that might struck our country. 
Now, these are the classifications of tropical cyclones. First, is we have the tropical depression. It is a weak, low-pressure disturbance with a definite surface circulation. It has a maximum wind speed of up to 61 km per hour and it is common in the equatorial region or the Intertropical Convergence Zone or the ITCZ. That is an illustration of a tropical depression in the picture. The next one is we have the tropical storm. Tropical storm, it is a moderate tropical cyclone with a maximum wind speed of 62 to 88 kilometers per hour. It is more organized and more circular in the shape. The rotation of tropical storm is more recognizable than that of a tropical depression. So if you are going to observe the illustration, it is more organized and more circular compared to the tropical depression. And the third one, is we have the typhoon. It is an intense weather disturbance with an average size of about 500 kilometers in diameter. It has a maximum wind speed of more than or greater than 118 kilometers per hour. And this is an illustration of a typhoon. It is wider compared to the tropical depression and the tropical storm. That is the classification of a tropical cyclone. Let us now proceed to the other weather disturbances that we experience in the Philippines. First is we have the monsoon. It is a continuous change in the direction of the prevailing winds blowing at a particular direction. When we have a monsoon, we also experience heavy rains. And in the Philippines, we are experiencing two types of monsoon. We have the northeast monsoon or the hanging amihan and we have the southwest monsoon or the hanging habagat. The northeast monsoon or the hanging amihan is a seasonal wind that blows from November to February. It gives us cold temperature during the year. That is why during Christmas or during December, we are experiencing a very cold weather. That is because of the hanging amihan. The next one is the southwest monsoon or the hanging habagat. The country experiences this seasonal wind from May to October. It is moist, warm, and brings large amounts of rainfall to the Philippines. That is why when May or June reaches, we are experiencing heavy rains already. So, that is already the start of the rainy season in the Philippines. Next, is we have the easterly winds. The easterly winds is the northeast trade winds. It may move over an elongated low-pressure area, forming an easterly wind. It includes the low-pressure area. When warm air rises, cools down, and condenses into clouds, and we have the high-pressure area. Air presses downwards, causing the air on the surface to be dry, and this indicates a fair weather. And the last one is we have the ITCZ or the Intertropical Convergence Zone. It is the area near the equator where the trade winds from North and South Hemisphere meet. The two trade winds create a band of clouds that bring heavy rainfall. So those are a few of the weather disturbances that we experience here in the Philippines. Now, let us proceed to the condition of the environment before, during, or after the typhoon. So these are the things that we will observe when there is a weather disturbances that may occur in our country or area. These are the things that we experience before a typhoon. We can experience a high clouds observed in the sky. The air is dry and cold. The relative humidity is high and the wind blows gently with scattered rain showers. As you can see in the illustration, everyone is using an umbrella because there is a scattered rain showers in their area. That is before the typhoon. Now, what is the weather condition during the typhoon? 
The sky is dark and cloudy. Heavy rainfall with strong winds. Big waves near the coast. Flash floods due to heavy rainfall. Landslides and uprooted trees and crops. So as you can see in the picture, you can see the trees blown by strong winds and heavy rains. What about after the typhoon? The sun is visible and the sky becomes clearer. There is a scattered rain showers. Some areas are still flooded and recovering from the typhoon. Many residents are staying from the evacuation areas. Rescue and relief operations are ongoing. And there might be an outbreak of waterborne diseases, influenza, and dengue that is due to the stagnant water caused by the typhoon. So this is an illustration of what you are going to expect after a strong typhoon. And now let us proceed to the precautionary measures before, during, and after the typhoon. We need to practice these things for us to become safe after the typhoon. First, what are the things that we need to do before a typhoon? Once we already learned that there is a typhoon coming to our area, we have to prepare enough food to last for three days. We have to listen to radio or TV for updates on the oncoming ty typhoon. We have to prepare flashlights and extra batteries in case of power interruption. And this is very much important, we have to prepare an emergency kit. We also have to check your electric posts to prevent accidents. Cut all branches of trees around your house that might possibly fall on your house. So if possible, we have to check this also. And of course, we have to pack a bag with clothes, batteries, flashlight, water, canned goods, and other necessities in case you have to evacuate. So these are the things that we need to prepare. You can see that in the illustration. So you need to have your own bag and you have to put all these important things that you need in order for you to be ready when you need to evacuate your area. Next, let us proceed. These are the things that we need to do during a typhoon. First, Stay calm and be alert. Stay indoors. Cancel any plans of travels. Monitor the weather reports. Check what is happening around you. When local authorities advise you to evacuate, do so. Be ready to evacuate if necessary. So we have to listen to these authorities for us to be safe. So all we need to do during the typhoon is to stay indoor and become updated about the movement of the typhoon. And of course, these are the things that we need to do after the typhoon. Clean your house from any typhoon debris. Check for any damages brought by typhoon. Repair if necessary. This is also very important. You have to boil your drinking water. Your drinking water might be contaminated because of the flood. You have to boil it before drinking for your safety. And of course, stay away from broken posts. They might collapse anytime. So these are the things that we need to practice for us to be safe. These are the precautionary measures before, during, and after the, the typhoon that we need to observe. Thank you so much kids for listening. I hope you have learned a lot of things today about the weather disturbances. Always remember that it is fun to learn science. Keep learning science kids. Thank you for listening.